Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Tom Loeb, a highly regarded clinician, surgeon, and professor with strong interests in nutrition, metabolism, wound care, and regenerative medicine. Welcome, Dr. Lowe. My pleasure to be here, thank you so much. You've credited your lifelong interest and passion for medicine to your battle with leg perthes disease. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, it's really one of my earliest memories. I was diagnosed with the disease when I was about two, two and a half years of age, uh, and ended up in a, a children's hospital, children's orthopedic hospital in the Baltimore where I grew up. Uh, and I was off my feet in the hospital for about a year and a half, which is pretty dramatic for a, a child of that age. Yes. And one of my earliest memories uh, was uh, in the hospital when my instructions to the nurses uh, uh, were for non-weight bearing. So that means I couldn't stand, I couldn't be on my knees uh, because the joint of the hip softens up and, and could get deformed. So I wasn't allowed to, uh, to have any weight bearing. And it was a ward in those days with a bunch of children. And it was a holiday, uh, 4th of July if I'm not mistaken, and there was a party. And, and I remember uh, all the kids were having a party off in the corner at a table eating ice cream and cake. And I was in my crib or cage as it was to me in those days and I was up on my knees with my hands on the bars and I remember trying to see what was going on with the kids and then there was a, a visiting nurse or, or a temporary uh, nurse for the weekend and uh, she wasn't my usual nurse who would have just said hey Tommy you're not supposed to be on your knees and remind me uh, instead uh, uh, she couldn't be bothered so she put me in a straitjacket so I remember listening t at the age of two and a half or three to all my friends laughing and having a party uh, and I was in a straitjacket with a bare light bulb swinging above me and I, I very consciously said this isn't right uh, there's wow. got to be a better way to take care of people uh, and it was at that time when I decided to become a physician and help people rather than subject them to the treatment that I was being subjected to at that time. Wow, at three years old you realized right. that that wasn't right. That's an amazing story. So where did you go to med school and, and what were you originally uh, trained in? Sure, so uh, I went to medical school in Baltimore, my hometown, University of Maryland, where it was a state school. I got an amazing education. Uh, and even very early on, uh, I wanted to be a pediatric surgeon. Now, why a pediatric surgeon? My classmates didn't even know what that was. We didn't even have one in my medical school. Uh, and so I, uh, I knew that surgery was something that sounded like fun. I watched a lot of medical shows on TV, Dr. Kildare and Ben Casey, and, and it, it looked like that would be fun. And I, and I couldn't imagine anybody in their right mind wanting to take care of adults. Of course, now I take care of adults and children. But, but, but in those days, I, I really was passionate about uh, caring for kids, probably because of my own sure. early ex experience. Uh, and I heard that there was a field of pediatric surgery, so uh, I remember going to uh, one of my advisors who I admired. Uh, he was the head of cardiothoracic surgery at my medical school. Uh, and I, I said, listen, I'm interested in, in, at the time, I thought maybe pediatric heart surgery. He was a heart surgeon. Uh, and I said, would you be my advisor? And he said, yes. And uh, he, he said, uh, uh, what rotation are you in now? I said, well, I'm just taking biochemistry. He said, well, what year are you? I said, I'm a first year medical student. He said, well, you don't pick advisors till your third year. I said, yeah, but I need an advisor now. And, and so he and I, he became my advisor, became a good friend. And he said, well, if you want to do pediatric surgery, uh, you need to uh, uh, go spend some time. And he named some prominent surgeons in the area. Uh, one was C. Everett Koop, who people knew it was the Surgeon General. Sure. Uh, and uh, uh, J. Alex Haller, who was at Hopkins, so Hopkins University of Pennsylvania, uh, and, and Harvard. And I ended up as a medical student doing rotations in all these places, trying to understand a little bit better about what pediatric surgery was uh, was all about and, and I knew that was the thing for me so that's what I became. And that's what you've been practicing your whole sure. career? Sure, so, so I did all my uh, surgical training at the Ohio State University Hospitals in Columbus, Ohio uh, in the Midwest and, and then stayed there for my pediatric surgical residency at then the Children's Hospital, now Nationwide Children's Hospital, a very prominent uh, children's hospital in, in the U.S. and, and uh, uh, knew at that time that I, I wanted to teach and then be an academic uh, uh, surgeon. Uh, I got involved uh, in using lasers. 
uh, and I got involved uh, through that uh, in using laparoscopes. And I ended up writing uh, the first te textbook in pediatric laparoscopic and thoracoscopic surgery in, in, in children, and uh, from there sort of became world famous as an innovator and, and a pioneer in, in minimally invasive and, and robotic surgery. I'm the head of pediatric surgery at, at uh, my medical school at the University of Illinois at Chicago, and so I have a whole staff under me. Uh, I'm the busiest surgeon of, of the group, so I still have a full-time uh, surgical practice even though I'm up in my 70s. They should have put me out to pasture years ago, but I'm, I'm having too much fun and I, I guess they appreciate uh, uh, my teaching and I enjoy working with the students and residents. So that's a full-time job and then I have this practice on the side. We have two offices in Chicago. Uh, we're, we're, we're pretty busy. We see, we see a lot of patients. I have a whole staff uh, uh, of folks that, uh, that help me out. So I pretty much have two full-time jobs. Uh, uh, the, the difference is, uh, you know, I make my living as a surgeon. Uh, the re regenerative medicine practice I do uh, because for me it's the right thing to do. I, I don't make money in the practice. I have to make enough money to pay the bills mm -hmm. and, and pay the overhead, uh, but I, I don't take any income. I, I actually put in a lot of time uh, because I help so many people and, and that's my passion. Oh, wow. What first drew you to the practice of regenerative medicine? You know, I've always been interested in what's beyond what they taught me in medical school. Uh, and uh, in fact, I just taught a course uh, earlier today and I, I told the story uh, about how when I was a kid, my mom pumped me full of bags of vitamins. And, and then I, you know, I got interested in uh, hypnosis and my, my first term paper in 10th grade was on acupuncture. And, and, and so I said, I always wanted to know what, what is it that they're not teaching us, what the, the stuff that's not mainstream. It's been around for thousands of years. There, there must be something to it. And, and so I've always been interested in alternative types of, of therapy. And I, I set up a practice, even though I was still a, a full-time uh, surgeon, uh, of uh, energy-based uh, medicine and, and patients came to me and said, look, I want to look better, I want to feel better, I want to have better sex, I, I, I got brain fog, I, I can't think, I want to lose weight. And I said, well, energy medicine isn't really uh, solving all of their problems, but, but they're asking for something, so let me give them what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I then started coming to the A4M. I, I discovered uh, uh, the world of hormones uh, and intravenous nutrition in, in a different way than we do in the hospital. Uh, and cellular-based therapies, including stem cells and exosomes. And so over the last decade, uh, I've learned as much as I can and, and have begun to teach and, and pay back my teachers uh, for, for the good that they've done me. And I can tell you, uh, it's made a world of difference to my patients. You know, I, I now get patients coming to me where everybody else fails. Mm -hmm. And they say, Dr. Loeb, Nobody else has been able to figure out my problem. Can you help me? And I don't advertise. The patients come to me by word of mouth mm -hmm. uh, because other patients uh, are, are having successes. And, and I'm just saying some things that I never imagined uh, possible through the whole world of, of regenerative medicine and, and everything that uh, AFRM gives us uh, as uh, physicians uh, learning uh, new approaches, new techniques, uh, uh, keeping up with the science that the rest of our colleagues are just uh, uh, left uh, yeah. uh, back in the dust uh, practicing what they were taught in medical school. Have you, have you taken any of the courses on peptides? Uh, I have taken the, uh, uh, the certification course and, and actually I taught the, as part of the course today I actually uh, uh, taught a section on the use of uh, uh, peptides and other cellular type uh, therapies for autism and it turns out that a majority of my practice seems to be adults and children with neurocognitive disorders and I treat a lot of probably more kids with autism than anybody else in the US today uh, and also adults with traumatic brain injury and, and other issues we're having a lot of success. So tell us about the, the course that you taught today. What was the, what was the name of it? So this was uh, Peptide uh, Module 3 and 4, uh, and uh, this was on the neurological applications of, uh, of peptides. And, and I will tell you, I've been using peptides in one form or another for over a decade, uh, and I first learned about them uh, through the AFRM. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the course that uh, uh, Bill Seeds put together, uh, I first went to, uh, to an introductory workshop and was fascinated enough that when they offered the first certification course, I took that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and now I find myself uh, teaching it just because I think I asked Bill one too many questions. And he <laughs> said, you seem to know a lot about this. I'm going to ask you to talk for me. And, and so uh, I've always enjoyed uh, teaching and, and sharing, and, and I, it was received pretty well today. That's fantastic. 
you have an extensive background in teaching, and I've heard from many physicians who have gone through uh, the fellowship training here and such talk about the fact that this stuff was just never taught in, in med school. What do you think it's going to take, and do you think in this functional anti-aging integrative medicine is starting to be you know, uh, taught more in med schools? Well, interestingly, the public recognizes, in my opinion, the value of this. They recognize that there are limitations mm -hmm. to the way healthcare is, is administered and delivered today. Uh, and healthcare today uh, is, to a large extent, uh, uh, maintenance care or troubleshooting mm -hmm. or uh, I've got something that I need surgery for and I can have surgery. But it, it doesn't really maintain good health. It, it's not wellness care. Mm -hmm. And so functional medicine uh, and integrative medicine does a better job of teaching people how to prevent problems and how to stay well uh, beyond, okay, get your annual pap smear and, and your colonoscopy periodically and, and, and whatnot. We're, t we're talking about what do I eat right? Most doctors don't know how to advise their patients. Right. You know, how can I uh, detox? You, you, you know, I'm, my system is, is, is going awry and my body's all, all inflamed. Mm -hmm. How can I help that? Most doctors don't know how to uh, approach that as a problem. So tell, advising people uh, how to regulate their diet, proper nutrition, get the vitamins they need, the supplements that, that are, are missing from, from our ordinary diet, uh, how to uh, sleep well to, to, to get optimal health, uh, and just basics. Uh, you know, we're not offering that to our patients in a conventional medical setting. Yeah. Doctors don't have time to do that. Right, I know, I know. Well, hopefully uh, it, it changes and insurance companies start covering uh, prevention more and uh, they, they start teaching this uh, at med schools. Uh, so our, our physicians who are coming up have this uh, knowledge and understanding. Well, it takes physician leaders. I, I will tell you, going back to my days at the University of Tennessee, uh, I went to my dean and I said, you know, I think we need to be teaching this. And he said, oh yeah, okay, fine. And I went to him a couple months later, I said, well, so what are you going to do about it? He said, well, I'm thinking about it. I went to him a third time a couple months later. He said, I just came from a conference of deans where Andy Weil spoke on uh, alternative medicine, mm -hmm. and I think it's important. I want you to be in charge. Mm -hmm. And so I got a group together, and, and we developed a curriculum so that all four years of medical school students got introduced to it. And it's not so much that you have to practice this. It's like you have to be aware that it's out there. Right, right. And you don't want to be left without any answers for them. So uh, Well, that, it's hard for doctors to admit that they don't know something. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, so, so well, this would be a good place for them to come to the apron. This is the best place to come. I, this has been the most meaningful educational experience of my career. Wow. And, and like I said, I'm, I'm uh, into my 70s, and I, it's like a, a renaissance of, of my education, and, and I, I'm hoping that I can be around for another 70 years to, to, to keep learning and practicing. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that with us today, and, and thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you.